This video covers part of the content for the Cloud APIs virtual event, which is all about using APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. The content is available on GitHub, and this particular video covers the content for exercise one, getting an overview of the API resources. Before we move into exercise one though, let's just take a quick look at the pre prerequisites for this particular virtual event. So uh, basically you're gonna need Chrome, you're gonna need Postman, you're going to need a SAP Cloud Platform trial account, if you haven't got one already. And within your trial account, you should have uh, the Cloud Foundry environment set up with an organization and space ready to work in. Plus you need to subscribe to the SAP Business Application Studio uh, and have a dev space already set up within the App Studio based upon the basic template and including the additional tools, uh, MTA tools and workflow management extensions. Okay, so let's get started with exercise one. This is just a brief overview of what API resources are available, just to give you an idea of where to find things and sort of how to interpret them. There are three steps in this exercise, which are listed here. So basically, uh, the first step involves us getting familiar with the SAP API Business Hub, which I'm gonna call the API Hub, uh, probably throughout the rest of these exercises. So the general idea is that we're gonna explore the API Hub and use uh, workflow as a particular topic uh, to focus on uh, rather than just look around the, the API hub without any particular purpose. So what I've got here on the right hand side, I'm already signed in, I'm already logged into the API hub. And uh, as directed here, let's just uh, search for workflow and to see uh, to see what the API hub uh, will bring up for us. We can see as also shown in the screenshot here, we got lots of different results. And those different results can actually be refined by different types, by different content types. So we have APIs, API packages, integration packages, documents, and CDS views. As you can see here, um, there's a description of the differentiating factors that we see in these results here. If we, for example, uh, look at the APIs and the API packages only, that sort of narrows it down to what we're really interested in here. Notice, for example, that some of the APIs denoted by this symbol here, some of the APIs are OData APIs, some are REST APIs, some are for uh, the Neo environment, some are for the Cloud Foundry environment, for example, and there are also API packages. So this symbol here represents an API package. In fact, as directed here, let's just select this SAP Cloud Platform Workflow API package to see what's in there. We're taking basically to the list of APIs. And again, we can see that uh, the, diff the, the different APIs are differentiated by environment, by version, for example, and we've also got information about the type of API that there is. Okay, now, um, as, it's, as we're, we're instructed here, we're gonna go one level deeper uh, by selecting one of these particular APIs. We need to choose the workflow API for Cloud Foundry, which is this one here, the REST API and we're presented with a swagger style set of documentation about the endpoints for that particular API. So let's just make sure we, we know where we are. We are looking at the API, Workflow API for Cloud Foundry. We've got a list of API endpoints with the corresponding methods that can be called on those endpoints to do certain things. And these endpoints are organized into groups into logical groups. So at the moment, the default group, the first in the list here on the left-hand side is the user task instances group. We can switch to the task definitions group. The first one is automatically expanded. We can sort of contract it by just clicking the method there. We can look at the workflow definitions, endpoints, the workflow instances, endpoints, and so on. Okay, so before we leave this particular step here, we're gonna take a quick look at the configure environments facility. 
Now we're going to be dealing with this in a later exercise in this virtual event, but basically let's have a quick look now. This configure environments facility enables, as it says here, a logged on user. So you've got to be logged on to define some configuration, to define a set of values to make API calls directly from within the API hub. Now within the API hub itself, for many APIs, there's a sandbox environment already defined. This sandbox environment is a test environment. It's not your data. It's, it, it hasn't got any relation to any particular service instances you may have set up or any service keys. So that's why you can, as well as the sandbox environment, create your own environment here too. So we'll come back to that in a later exercise. Okay, so that was a very, very brief overview of the API Hub. The API Hub, as it says at the top here, is generally the sort of, you know, what I'm calling the canonical home of API, API information for SAP services, okay? But it's not the only place where API information uh, can be found. So in the uh, next two steps in this exercise, we're going to just explore a couple of those places. One place is the SAP Cloud Platform Service APIs, uh, which are available and described starting from the SAP Cloud Platform Trial Cockpit Landing page. So I'm just going to open up this in a new window. And uh, we can see in our sort of cockpit landing page, we have access, uh, you know, easy access to the Business Application Studio, to the CLI for SAP Cloud Platform, very important tool, and also to these APIs for SAP Cloud Platform, which is what we're interested in here. So we're gonna select this link and we can see the different APIs available. We've got APIs for accounts, for entitlements, provisioning, and so on. Basically all the different sort of artifact types that we might come across on SAP Cloud Platform. So if we select one of them, for example, the accounts group, we can see that we have a number of endpoints grouped together, just like we saw or very in a very similar way to how we saw in the API Hub. So we've got a group of APIs relating to global account operations, a group of API endpoints relating to directory operations, sub-account operations, and job management. So for example, here, if we just pick one at random, we, we see that there's a, a similar combination of HTTP method and path, representing the combination of a verb and a noun for a particular API endpoint, for a particular activity. Note as well, as it said right at the top there, that the, um, the APIs are currently in beta. Before finishing, as it says here, right at the bottom, of this particular page, for example, on each, each of the API pages, there's an, a link to the authorization documentation. This will tell us how to manage authentication for the uh, core APIs. And uh, let's just make a quick mental note of what require, what's required here. Basically, we can see here that the APIs are protected with OAuth2, particularly uh, the password grant type, which we'll come to in a later exercise in this virtual event. Uh, this, uh, this page here describes how to start using the APIs, how to start retrieving authentication details and an access key or an access token to call the APIs and so on. So this has got a lot of information that we'll be looking at in a little bit more detail in a more generic way from an OAuth 2.0 perspective in uh, subsequent exercises. Okay, and the final thing in this particular exercise that we're gonna look at in step three is yet another example of where there's information on APIs. This is in relation to the enterprise messaging service. Uh, if we look at the enterprise messaging documentation, let's just do this over here again. Uh, there's plenty of documentation and we can see that uh, inside of the development section, REST APIs for development, we've got a couple of nodes here. Use REST APIs to send and receive messages and use REST APIs to manage queues and queue subscriptions. So if we take the first one as directed here, for example, We can also see a little bit of documentation as to basically how to prepare to make 
API calls in this context. Uh, there's a description here uh, as to what to do. We can see all sorts of de detail relating again, as we'll, as we'll find out and learn about together later, relating to OAuth 2 again. And we can see here, for example, that there's a, a number of parameters that are required to be passed when, requ when requesting an access token. We'll deal with this. We'll, we'll understand a little bit more about this later on. Just want to take a quick overview, first of all. Okay, so here's some documentation as to how to find out about uh, using, authenticating for, and actually making calls to a these uh, messaging APIs. If we go uh, up here in the context where it says here, you can access the messaging APIs here, we can actually see some documentation for these messaging APIs. This documentation looks slightly different to what we've seen already in the API hub and for the core service APIs on SAP Cloud Platform. But generally, it's more than enough to uh, be able to work out what to do, how to make these calls to these different endpoints here. This particular set of uh, endpoints are relating to these, uh, what's called the, the messaging group of endpoints, the messaging API here. There's also, if we go back, there's also the so-called management API set, which has a set of documentation which looks almost the same. There's a bit of a table of contents here as well. So just bear in mind generally that APIs on SAP Cloud Platform are many and varied. We get a lot of information in the API hub, but there are other cases as well where you'll want to look in the SAP help portal for information about uh, particular APIs. That brings us really uh, to the end of this first exercise. It's really just a brief overview, just to, just to make sure we're comfortable and familiar with, with uh, where API documentation can be found on SAP Cloud Platform, uh, the sorts of ways that you can find out about how to access those APIs and how to authenticate against those APIs and so on. So that's the end of exercise one. Thanks for watching.